Terry with a special presentation from D-Lab Electronics. Many of you have seen me using my homebrew Variax. I've got the one that's in that crazy Heathkit cabinet, the dial on top and the dual metering. And I've had many of you say, Terry, how can we build our own benchtop Variac because they're really hard to find? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to repurpose an old piece of test equipment into that benchtop Variac. So you've got the key piece that you need for amplifier and radio repair. Well, here's the chosen donor, a Nightkit KG660 battery eliminator, okay? These things were pretty popular back in the 60s and 70s before they had nice DC power supplies. So this actually utilizes a Variac for the DC and you've got DC volts, DC amps, fuse holders, switches, etc. in a nice sturdy cabinet. So I thought, well, heck, we'll just take that, add some components, and guess what? We'll convert it to an AC Variac. So what do you need? We obviously need a bare AC Variac to start off with. This is a 3 amp model. Got a couple panel meters here that I bought from All Electronics. So we got our volt and our amp meter. And here is our chassis mount AC outlet for the power. So we're re going to reutilize the layout, the power switch, the fuse, but we're going to have to remove all the DC components. So that's the first step. Let's go. I right, got the screws out. Let's get this chassis out and see what we're dealing with. Yes, this is a non-functioning unit. Okay. So there was the old original Variac. They had a big monster filter cap. There's those cheap meter movements, so I'm pretty much going to gut out everything except for the fuse holder. All right, so I got her gutted out. Check out the thickness of that panel. Very strong. It's going to be a great front panel for your new Variac. So here is the new AC Variac. It'll come right in from the back, just like the original one did. So the next thing I need to do is open up these holes for the new panel meters to drop in. They're a little small. So I have to get that modified, mount up the Variac, wire it up, and we'll have this thing going in no time. All right, here's where the work comes in. You have to modify the panel for your new meters. Now, if you have a set of meters with a pilot hole of around 52 millimeters, you can drop it right in. But these, the hole, requires about a 60 millimeter opening which is not going to work out it's hitting right so what I'm going to do is put this on my milling machine I'm actually going to open this up to a 60 millimeter square okay because I really can't cut a round hole too well on my mill so after I get that opened up to the 60 millimeters then I have to drill the holes for these little mounting lugs it should go right in there and it's going to line up nice because the top of the meter will hit this top gray line. They'll look super on this thing when it's done. Right, I've got the panel clamped down securely, squared up. You can see the outline of what I need to mill. Where these little X's are here, that is where the screws go through for the meter. So when I mill this, I'm going to swoop out a little bit, leave some meat there for the screws to go through. Other than that, it should mill pretty easy. This is aluminum. Now, yeah, you may think, man, I don't have a milling machine. So you do have options. You can get a hole punch or just find a meter that fits the diameter of the panel you're dealing with in the first place. Well, there we go. We got our 60 by 60 millimeter opening. You can see I swooped out here to allow some clearance for the screws. So remember, this is round, so it's going to kind of come up and hit these edges. There's going to be the gaps in the corner. So I may have to take and file this little edge a little bit, but this should allow for the meters to drop right in to this panel. Well, there's the meter almost in place. As I thought, those little corners are just hitting that diameter. So I'll take a file and knock those off, and then the meter should pop in. All right, mission complete. The meters sit in there very nicely. Next thing I need to do is punch the hole for the outlet. 
which is going to go here. So for this Hubble outlet, I've decided to use an inch and a half punch. Luckily, I've got these on hand because otherwise making these holes would be very difficult. All right, she's looking good. Got the Hubble outlet installed. Of course, the meters are ready to go in. Clean the front panel now, get the variac installed, and I get the wiring underway. So here's a peek of where we're at. Got our voltmeter installed now. Amp meter, variac is in there. Few soldiers back in, we're gonna use this power switch again. The light will be updated to a 120 volt instead of the six volt type. And there's your outlet. So yeah, you're gonna have some additional holes, some witness marks of its past use but that adds to the character of your custom bench variac. Now here we are backside, ready to start wiring. There's the new 120 volt pilot lamp, okay? One thing you gotta be very cautious of is these meter terminals. Do not apply heat to them. We're gonna use some ring terminals and connect to those using lock washers because if you try to solder to it, you're gonna melt your meters. All right, here we go. Wiring of our new retrofitted Variac is complete. Here is your power input switch. From there, it goes to the fuse holder and from there it distributes out to your variac, your metering, etc. This switch up here, if you remember, on the front was a six volt or 12 volt operation switch. That now has became the variac or line mode switch. So in one position your variac works, in the other position it is bypassed. Either way, everything goes through the amp meter to the AC outlet jack. Well, let's flip this thing around, temporarily connect power, and give it the initial test. So for the initial test, I'm actually gonna run this Variac off of my Variac in case I screwed something up. So initially, I've got my mode switch in line, so the Variac is not being used at this point. I'm just gonna bring up my Variac now, and you see the voltmeters coming up, okay? So there's around 50 volts. Does my power light work? Yep, I see him down there working, okay? So remember, this is 50 volts being applied direct through the amp meter to the AC outlet jack. Now, turn that down, go variac mode, and I'm gonna bring this up, and look, you do not see any voltage. Why is that? Because variac knobs all the way down, okay? So I'm applying 50 volts, so if I go all the way up, there's my 50 volts. So Variac mode is working. Now that I'm happy that that's operational, let's disconnect from this Variac, go line, uh, put a load on it, we'll see if the amp meter works. Now we're going to go full voltage test, so I'm going to go to line. My power switch is off right now, just plugged her in. Power is up. You see we have 120 volts. Once again, Variac does nothing, okay? Amp meter. I'm using a soldering iron as a load. Look at there. About an amp and a half. Pretty responsive little amp meter. I like that. All right, let's go over to Variac mode. Remember, we have no voltage. So if, let's say you were working on a guitar amp. You want to watch your current. You know that you should be drawing, in this case, about an amp and a half max. So here's my load, but we have nothing, right? Let's bring up the Variac. So there's 50 volts. You can see we've got about a half amp. Right on up. Working great. All right. There's a completed project, all labeled up, 3 amp max on the fuse to protect the Variac. And now you've got the mode switch for Variac or line operation. Looks pretty sweet, I think. And the investment is well under 100 bucks for the completed project. So as promised, I'm going to cut to the schematic for the metered Variac, and here it is. So you can see she's really straightforward, guys. Kind of hard to mess this one up. So if you use this diagram 
and reference this video, you should easily be able to construct one of these for your test bench. So there is a very economical solution to a metered variac for your test bench. Okay, You can just repurpose old equipment. In this case, I use the Night Kit cabinet. However, Heathkit built the BE4 and the IP12s, and they have the same type of layout. So you can do it with those units too. As you can see, I did not put an isolation transformer in this unit. To tell you the truth, it is not required because most of the equipment that you work on already has a power transformer. So it's isolated. Why feed a transformer with a transformer? Okay, you see where I'm going with that. So anyway, guys, you can do this yourself. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Get in your junk boxes, search the internet, gather the parts, build the unit, save yourself four to five hundred dollars and enjoy the fact that you build it yourself. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again.